Hey guys, it's me, Paul. Right now, I'll be walking you through my script Genesis code. So, I set up a really simple program right here. If you click on the cube object, it's going to turn into a sphere, just like this object. So, how, how, might I, how did I do that? If you go to the cube properties in the inspector tab, you can see my script here. If all I did was drag it in. Okay, see? It's that simple to drag it in. And then there's multiple properties that you have to fill in before you can make your program work. For a script note, it's basically like a comment section. You can actually title your scripts. So this will be really useful if you have multiple Genesis code script components. For example, like say I have maybe like, you know, three of these and I minimize them all. Like, how am I going to differentiate between different scripts if I can't name them myself? So it's really useful for those types of situations. And here are the conditions. So. There's many different conditions over here. You can make it change into a sphere automatically at the beginning, or you could make it like always changing into a sphere. This this always condition is really useful for um, destroying or, or creating objects. You can make it. You can set the condition to triggers, collisions, and controller colliders. What that means is that when another object, like say for example the sphere, when the sphere object collides with this object's trigger, or this object's collision, or this object's controller collider, depending on the condition, it will perform a specified action of your choosing. So let's go back to this condition on mouse press. What that basically means is that when when the mouse clicks on this object in game, it will perform the specified action, which is to change into a sphere. So you can set the old object and the new object. And you can so if you want to change the cube into like even a main camera you can do that. Or if you want to change the sphere into a cube, you can do that too. And here, over here on the on key press, what that means is that if you press any input key, let's say for example you have space, and if you don't know what to type in, there's a list of input keys uh, button over here. It automatically links you to the website. So it's right over here. They they follow that type of template. So let's say for example you want to change the cube into a sphere when you press space. All you have to do is type in space with no quotation marks. You hit play and bam it turns into a sphere. Alright and this this property use new rotation that basically means after it changes into the new object do you want it to keep use the new object's rotation so do you want it to rotate in the same rotation that the sphere is in or do you want do you want it to keep the old rotation so those are all the conditions so far for genesis code but let's look at maybe the actions now. So create, for example, basically means you're instantiating an object. You're spawning an object, you're creating an object at a specified position. So I, what if I want this what if I want a sphere object to be created? And how many do I want? I only want one. I could have a hundred if I want to, but let's just go start with one. I want it to be created with a hundred percent certainty. 
and I wanted to spawn um, at a random position with the cube being treated as the origin object. So let's say let's say let's let's try a small number like one. And then let's see what happens. Yeah, see, it's creating it within the within the radius, within the three D radius of the cube. So that can be really useful if you're trying to spawn objects within a specified zone or area. You can just set the minimum position and a maximum position and it automatically creates a zone of spawning um, a zone where new objects can be spawned to let's take a look at the teleport action it's a similar thing so you can you can teleport the sphere object into a random position that's like near the cube So, see, teleports it right next to the cube. Now, this action, the destroy action, what it does is basically destroy an object of your choosing. So it can actually destroy itself, or you can destroy another object. Let's see here. You can, you can make it destroy itself. Or you could make it destroy another object. Alright. So far those are the those are the main basics of Genesis code. You can do a wide array of um, different combinations with this to make your game idea come to life. You can you can use many different conditions combined with like an array of actions in order to perform amazing maneuvers and amazing programs and processes for your game. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it gives you a better sense of what Genesis code can really do. So I hope this script proves to be useful for you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.